you know, there's nothing that, I mean, I never really wanted to do acting, I guess. Um, I still, I mean, I love it. I enjoy it. It's like so much fun to get to pan, but I always just want to work in film. I was a boom operator for the longest time. I got in trying to do stunts and, and it was a lot of fun uh, doing all those stunts. And it was, uh, <laughs> No, but I did. Uh, I actually used to uh, get. I went uh, when I first started. I actually got a. Uh, I went to all these different martial arts schools, and I put up like flyers of like stunts question mark. But there's no, you know YouTube wasn't a thing. The you know Facebook, Instagram, all the all that stuff. So it was me and my buddies who actually because I'm from Georgia, I got to see a lot of like friends from uh, that I hadn't seen in years, and we got to do stunts. And he was like, "You remember when we used to roll down the stairs and we're like trying to figure out how to do like stair falls and all that?" I'm like. Yeah, that hurt. And I'm like thinking like all my other friends like like we we didn't even realize at the time I was like oh we could put pads under our clothes because we won't see the pads. So it was like a lot of like trial and error and trying to figure things out. And and I probably have a few more brain cells if I did it properly. But uh, after that it was um, I was doing a, a film uh, another indie in, in Georgia uh, called Golgotha uh, and. I was doing a lot of like spear spear work and I was doing the choreography for that and um, the the sound mixer was like, oh hey, would you like to hold that boom pole? It's like that spear. And I was like, yeah, I've done it before. And then I started doing this for a living. I was just miking everybody. And uh, as I did that, I was watching, uh, you know, I'm in the room with the actors, with the directors, and like in the private rehearsals that I'm just watching. And then, you know, as a kid, my mom always said, I never, she never saw me crawl. I just, or tr she never saw me try and crawl. She just, I did it. She never saw me like try and walk. I just did it. And so, um, but I think with me, I was always just a very visual, very visual learner and just trying to watch people do, uh, you know, the things that they, that they have going. <laughs> uh, you know, I try to, but I try to watch and learn from, uh, uh, you know, so many other people and who, like, even now as an actor, you know, I'm on these shows and I'm watching actors be incredible and watching directors now, like, try and communicate with us. And a director having to communicate with me is like some of the hardest things. I feel I feel so bad for them. They have to use like quick words with me. I, I, I lose attention quickly. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more. Ugh! I'm like, thank you. Good. Don't use words. I'll just do that. So. <laughs> with, with me, as far as uh, well, as a crew member, as a crew member working on an indie was a lot more fun for me. It meant a lot more work and a lot less money, but it was because it was because it was cheaper and they couldn't pay you as much, they gave you more leeway to kind of uh, like express your opinions on things. And that doesn't mean like before take, you know, run in and suggestion, but like it was a lot more collaborative, you know, they would just say, hey, we need this, figure it out, you know, like that kind of situation. It's like, hey, we need to build a wall or we need to do something like that. It's like, okay, any particular way you want it, so just make sure it blocks this, you know, like, okay, and then, so we had a lot more, um, I'm using this and that, so I'm not really describing what I'm talking about, but it's fine, this and that, uh, but the, but, you know, there's, and you also got closer, because with, when you do, like, the bigger projects, um, as a crew member, you know, it's 16 hours, and you just want to go home, and you don't, and you, and you know you have to be back the next day, and with an indie, there's a lot more passion involved behind mm -hmm. it from everybody, um, while the crew, Though they're passionate about their job, they may not be passionate about the show that they're doing or working on. I'm not saying anything in specific because right. I love, I do love all my shows. And the thing about Walking Dead that is so cool, and and Shazam that I love because they're almost Canadian and they're super nice. <laughs> um, but when it came to both those shows, it was it was people that it was these big projects where people actually truly care, like or just. Yeah, as a sound guy, I love it when the mixer like starts like, so I just got this uh, new thing and it preamps like this. And it's like, like, yeah, just talking about all this stuff that I still don't know. I just knew how to put a boom over my head. You know, it's like, aim the microphone, you got it. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, just, but seeing that kind of like, the enjoyment from that in a lot of people is, is something exciting that you don't see in a lot of, a lot of the, a lot of the bigger stuff. But um, it's, I don't know. So I guess one is great for learning and trying to, uh, uh, like the you know like the the bigger budget stuff it's great for learning um, how to kind of make a living out of your out of uh, out of your work mm -hmm. and then doing the indies it's the you you still learn the same way but you also get to put in a little more of your your heart for, for that um, and that's that's the difference I notice
Yeah, they had um, <clears throat> Jerry. Well, he was, I read him as Lester. That was the, <laughs> the name they gave. But Jerry is very much a, a this character that was kind of like a hybrid of of sort of like my input and Scott and Greg's. Um, and when I first got him, it was sort of read as like this tough guy, like this. And I've, I've been watching the show forever, and. I think I'm tough. I don't know. And as being a, a guy who thinks he's tough, I don't need to kind of flaunt that I'm tough. I don't need to be like, yeah, <laughs> let's, uh, let's kill things. You know, it's, it doesn't it doesn't apply to that. You know, it's like and what I liked about Jerry was that there was I don't, I don't quite think they knew exactly what Jerry was. I don't uh, I wasn't sure until I had like this pun that I saw in the writing that I don't think it was as a pun, I don't think it was supposed to be intended, or I just read it horribly um, a bunch of times, but um, finding Jerry and sort of kind of being this happy character when when everyone isn't was made a lot of sense to me. It's not like he's crazy, it's just that he was able to kind of see the, see the good in it. It was just a different perspective, you know? Because um, I can't imagine going through any kind of life where I'm just like carrying this baggage with me, and I definitely didn't want to play a character that was gonna do the same thing, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was definitely much. It was definitely a collaboration on on how Jerry was going to be, but that happiness and kind of a little bit of that breaking of the fourth wall, where he's like, "I'm about to meet Rick Grimes. I'm going to act like I know who Rick Grimes is outside of this world." And that <laughs> was, you know, that's fun for me because it's, uh, you know, as a fan of the show, I like, I don't know, I want people to see that. It's like, oh crap, he he likes it too. So, um, yeah, Jerry's just, I don't know, Jerry's like this happy this this happy thing that isn't he's not crazy he's not you know but he just sees the good in it and I like that about him cool Dar uh, well, Darling was uh, was directed by uh, Pauline McIntosh who played Jadis and Anne in, in Walking Dead um, and though she and I had never had scenes uh, in the show mm -hmm. uh, we got along we got along terrifically uh, and and uh, she was like, yeah, man, I'm writing this script if you want uh, you want to check it out you know and and she had done this movie called The Woman uh, and Offspring, which are, were the prequels to to Darlin and it's like a it was so hard for me to describe, but now I think I got it. Darlin is a coming of age uh, a film about a girl who was raised as a cannibal who now is dealing with the pregnancy who has to live uh, amongst a, a group home <laughs> of this Catholic school. Hmm. <laughs> it's such a different movie that it took me so... And what I loved about Darlin was the fact that... Um, and, you know, it's about a cannibal woman, you know, who... who in woman, it's about this cannibal who was, like, held hostage by uh, this religious fanatic and... Um, and then she ends up like escaping and killing all of them, and it's pretty awesome. So it's like this is a very empowering, <laughs> empowering film, but in a very unique way by the fact that they eat uh, the people they don't like. Uh, but you know, uh, Pollyanna, she directed this, she wrote this, and you can. This is what I was talking about with indies. There was a love and a passion that like I, I couldn't see from like I wouldn't have seen from other people uh, for the budget that we had, um, and. It was a you know it was a relaxing character for me because it was just we had just finished uh, uh, our our eighth season and that was a lot of fighting and war and stuff and this was we were shooting in Baton Rouge and it was this relaxing kind of film but it was just so different and shot so beautifully that I just I, don't know, I, I enjoyed it so I would definitely check it out if you haven't seen it because it's oddly it's oddly creepy but oddly like enjoyable in the sense that you like seeing these people get hurt because they kind of <laughs> deserve it so um but yeah why well, she i mean she is going to direct more like pollyanna is going to direct more Poly, pollyanna is going to direct more films because she's i mean she's talented I, I mean she's super talented and she was able to communicate with each actor differently and like i said earlier like how with me they have to say like quick words and she's like cooper you're like i don't know you look you look like you're like like I was like running around the room, like you look like you're waddling around, and I was like, I don't know how to say it, man. And, you know, but if she had said that to like another actor, that would probably piss them off. And me, I'm like, oh, good, stop walking weird, you got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, you know, that was that was definitely a, a hard project to shoot, and, cool. yeah, but it was nice. It was fun. Uh, I 
I was a huge, huge DC fan from the beginning. I was raised on Superman. I, I, I remember George Reeves, Christopher Reeves, uh, 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 Dean Cain when I was like eight years old and watching <laughs> Lois and Clark. And I want to get a compilation of Dean Cain um, from Lois and Clark dressed in the Superman costume every time he comes up to a body. He goes, he's dead. <laughs> he says it so much to the point where I'm like, this is, this is at least six times. He like, Superman comes up to someone, looks around, He's dead. <laughs> so, so, um, so, but I loved it. I loved, I loved DC Comics. Um, I love Marvel too, but I've read DC. I read Superman comic books. I got in during the Death of Superman and uh, the the Reign of Superman and um, and Dan Jurgens and, and 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 his and his and his art and everything. And it was just such a it was a fun thing for me. And then uh, when Shazam came up, I got excited because I'm like. I like DC. Oh, first it was it was called like uh, they had like a code name for it. I think it was like like Franklin or something. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's like oh, I wonder what this is. You know, I'm like <laughs> I wonder what I'm reading for. Uh, but it was I don't know it was cool because I always I always loved DC. Like DC was was the was the the comic I wanted to be or the you know the comic group that I want to be affiliated with. And uh, and when we did Shazam, um, I read that by myself. I did the audition. Uh, I had to send in the tape because I was filming Darlin mm -hmm. and no one was able to, everyone was working so I was by myself and I remember I didn't have time to learn the lines because I was shooting this other movie and so uh, I put the iPad behind my cell phone and I put a t-shirt over a lamp and I recorded myself uh, with my buddy on the on the laptop like uh, reading reading Rosa and he was like trapped in his car in LA and we were just doing the dialogue um, and I sent that in but it was, I don't know, DC to me it, it's these are like uh, DC characters are, are heroes that I think are, are more made and not but within themselves there is a strong difference between Marvel a lot of Marvel characters I feel like not all of them obviously there's exceptions on everything but a lot of the Marvel characters um, they're heroes that are kind of forced into becoming a hero like they're it's it's kind of like a, a it's like they have no choice Mm -hmm. And with with a lot of the DC characters, there there was a choice. It's their drive that kind of pushes them, uh, pushes them to to do the right thing. And that's why I like I don't know. That's why I always like resonated with a lot more of the DC characters. Um, but yeah, if I hadn't done Darlin, I wouldn't have done Shazam because I was up for another movie. Um, and it's and oh, I'll tell the story. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I, I ramble. I do this all the time. You can see this on my table so long because I don't actually let people move. Um, uh, no, but Pollyanna, she, uh, I was up for this other movie, um, and it was a big budget, uh, big budget film, and, um, but her movie was what was in the way, and I had a, a conversation with her about it, and she's like, I want you to do whatever you think's right, but let me tell you what I think is this, you know, you're thinking about, the, like, you're thinking about the money, and, you know, and, which I understand completely, but, like, do you actually like that project? And I was like, no, I don't, and then... And I was like, and I was I was gonna do it anyway, but I wanted to say I, I already said I was doing her movie, and I don't. Once I say something, I don't I don't change it. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I won't back out of it. Um, uh, and but she helped me like kind of understand that choice a little bit, and I got really excited for Darling. I was that's why I was so glad to be part of that movie, and not the other movie that I was that they were wanting. Me. And um, and because of that, had I done that other movie, I wouldn't have done Shazam, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been part of this amazing this amazing show. So it was a uh, uh, which it was just so cool, and we got more to come. So I'm like, that's cool, right. yeah, cool. It's serendipity. That's yes, that, yeah. That it worked out all right. So. Yeah, everything worked out great. I ain't <laughs> complaining. <laughs> and you know, as long as there's food wherever I'm going, I'll be all right. <laughs> Thank you cool. so much. Thanks, Thank man. you guys. I, pre yeah, I appreciate absolutely. that. <laughs> <laughs>